Hey, what's poppin' everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna get down to the real, real big business today. So I'm gonna be discussing some really exciting topics like Terraform, CDK, which is, if you did not know, Cloud Development Kit, and then um, how this all integrates together with infrastructure as code and CloudFormation templates. If you don't know what any of those terms are, that's all right. I'll explain to you, them to you very shortly. But before I do, make sure to triple click that like button for the YouTube algorithm, as it will help me a lot, and I put in a lot of effort to prepare for this one. So let's begin. So both Cloud Development Kit, or more commonly called to as CDK, and Terraform are ways to like write infrastructure as code. And if you do not know that Amazon AWS, they released something and announced something very early, or a couple weeks ago maybe. Um, so they're, they announced that Cloud Development Kit, CDK, is going to now support Terraform so you'll be able to write or write code with CDK so that, that will create Terraform. So if you did not know originally, CDK was only used to create CloudFormation templates. So now it's going to be able to be used with both CloudFormation and Terraform, which is really exciting. So since uh, CDK, I'll just say CDK. I don't want to say CloudFormation or Cloud Development every time. So CDK is still relatively new. It's, I don't know, it was made a couple years ago. And it's not like not many businesses are fully utilizing it yet. I'll explain it a little bit. So you can create and manage all your services using code you write in CDK. So it supports a different, bunch of different languages. Um, I believe Python and TypeScript are the main ones. But of, of, of course, it does support like some other ones like JavaScript. And there's a bunch of, there's like a bunch of five different languages I think it supports. So Behind the scenes, what you type, you like write code, and it'll write, in the end, it'll produce CloudFormation templates like that will say, like, create this resource in AWS or something like that. And many companies are, gonna, are using it right now to create microservices. Like, if you want to make a Lambda function, you want to have like the code in the Lambda function, and then you want to create a bunch of resources that will also be used by the Lambda function. So you can deploy all this in CDK at any time. So that's why people really like CDK. So the comparison for CDK is the serverless framework, which is also very popular. I would say more popular than CDK right now. But I have a feeling that more people are going to transfer on over to CDK. So the reason behind that is because the serverless framework, if you do not know, is you create these individual CloudFormation templates on how the what services are be, going to be created. So CDK, I believe, is on the rise in popularity. So that's why it is useful to learn it. So I did make another video on the CDK and how to like get started on it. So I'll link that in the description if you are interested. And then there's, of course, Terraform. So I'm mentioning Terraform because the DevOps subreddit really loves to use and talk about Terraform. So I got to gotta mention it there. So now on to what Terraform is. So Terraform is made by this company called HashiCorp, which is they really just want to really utilize infrastructure as code enable innovation. I guess that's their, their motto. So they are used by a bunch of cool companies. So they're not just like a, a no nobody company that no one uses. So like Progressive, Pandora, Hulu, those are all big name companies. So they want to do a bunch of cool stuff. And anyway, let's, uh, well, I'm not going to hear, I'm not going to go over what they are going to do. I just want to look at Terraform because that's what this video is about. So cloud infrastructure automation. So it's very similar to CloudFormation. So infrastructure is code for provision, provisioning, compliance, management of any cloud. So and this is the big part, any cloud infrastructure and service. So it can be any cloud, whatever, whatever cloud you want to, whether it be Google, AWS, or Azure, or like there's so many different clouds, 160 of them, I believe. So there's a lot. So the solution that they're trying to solve here is they want to get rid of manual provisioning. Like that doesn't really happen very often with like infrastructure of code. Fixed set of resources. So with with um, like CloudFormation and Terraform, you can deploy something over and over again. So it can be diverse, have diversity with providers. Oh, well, I guess that's not really related to fixed set of resources. But diversity of providers, that's kind of like multiple clouds I just mentioned. Workflow requiring ticketing and queues. So they don't want to, you don't want to see that anymore. And then self-service infrastructure. So use cases, of course, multi. This is probably the biggest one: multi-cloud compliance and management. Because there's already infrastructure as code, 
as code with CloudFormation. But the really big part is multi-cloud compliance. So I don't know too many companies that like use like more than like a couple cloud providers, but Terraform will allow you to do that. And of course, what is self-service infrastructure? So enable users to easily provision infrastructure on demand, a library of approved infrastructure. So something infrastructure that has, has been made before, it'll be easily made. So here's kind of like of an example stack or that you might have. And of course, it has access to all these different cloud providers, VMware and all these cool. Here are more big companies that use Terraform. By the way, I'm not affiliated or, or whatever with HashiCorp, which sounds like a really corporation. It's like a very corporation name, HashiCorp. <laughs> sounds like an evil corporation name, but I mean, they're not evil. I mean, at least I don't think they are. Find out next time, <laughs> is HashiCorp evil? But anyways, here's like an example uh, kind of file for Terraform. So you got your resource here, you got your name, size, image, and region. And then it's, it's very straightforward. It's kind of like JSON looks like. And of course, you can copy and clipboard. So that's the infrastructure as code. So they want to emphasize workflows, not technology. And open extensible, so you can use it with Oracle. I don't know what this cloud, pro cloud provider is. <laughs> doesn't even give me a link. Datadog, OpenStack. I don't know if this is uh, the sailboat one. That's where you, you sail off on an adventure. You find your own cloud provider. You make your own cloud provider. That's what that one is. I'm sorry. I don't know what that one is. I mean, I, I can see these ones. Google, GCP, AWS, Azure, but not, not the sailboat. Uh, what is that called? Um, steering wheel for a boat. And here is the also link the official article for CDK for Terraform that HashiCorp came out with about having to use CDK with Terraform. So only Python and TypeScript, they are going to be releasing more languages in the future. So, they're, so HashiCorp and AWS are working together on this little project. So as a platform, well, originally what Terraform did is they could, you can only use JSON and HCL, hydrochloric acid, to create Terraform. No, I'm just kidding. It's not hydrochloric acid. It's um, HashiCorp configuration language. That's what HCL stands for. So it's kind of like similar to like a YAML file for CloudFormation templates. You can also use Kubernetes with CRDS. But now, this new thing, you can use TypeScript and Python with CDK for Terraform to create Terraform to use over 200 more providers. So it's really awesome. So you can see a demo. I'm, I'm not going to show that. But you can. it's really easy to use, as CDK is really easy to use before. You just do like install global CDK, and it runs for you. I'm not going to go through all the steps. So now on to the ramifications of what this does for the cloud infrastructure. So CDK for Terraform. So what this really allows is that now you aren't necessarily tied down to one cloud provider. Or that's what Terraform is trying to do. So being tied down to one cloud provider, like everyone in the company has to use AWS, or everyone in the company has to use Google Cloud or whatever. It really, it's really good for that business, but for like the other businesses, it kind of hurts them. And it kind of produces kind of a monopoly on like the cloud provider if everyone in the company has to use one of these cloud providers. So when multiple, this kind of allows them, these cloud providers to compete, because if everyone just uses Terraform, then they can all just compete for what business you want to use. And when businesses compete for your business, then you win and the businesses lose, kind of. So a good example of this is like when a bunch of car companies, like you got Toyota, you got your Nissans, your Teslas, they compete to bring lower prices on cars, then you win because the, the, the prices go down, right? So Terraform is also open source, I should probably mention. That's really good to know as well. So here is also the official article. I'll link in the description. So some, you, the CDK code, which you can use for Terraform, is very similar looking to the, um, the CDK code just make, to make CloudFormation. You got your classes, and it's TypeScripty and all that stuff. And you basically create your resources. I mean, that's, that's all you can really say about it. So when synthesized, it'll produce JSON, Terraform, which makes sense, really straightforward. And here's the same thing we saw before. So 
What does this have to do for AWS, though? Because CDK now supporting uh, Terraform, that doesn't help the other cloud providers that much, um, really. Because what that would really say is that AWS only wants to use Terraform to create like AWS services. They don't want you to use like other services. So it's it's kind of counter against what I was saying before with like competition. They don't want competition, so that's why they're giving support for Terraform with their own CDK language. So it really makes you more tied down to AWS by making you get used to C AWS to CDK instead of like the more general Terraform. And there's nothing wrong with that right now. I mean, like I like AWS, but it makes you more prone to like large changes that AWS might do in the future. Like if you're only using it one cloud provider. So like if if there's like a really big change, then it'll be a lot harder to switch to like Azure if you are only using AWS. So then to answer the question, do I recommend learning this TypeScript and CDK or Python and CDK to create Terraform or CloudFormation templates? And it really depends on your use case because if you're just using CloudFormation templates, then yeah, use CDK to do that for you to make the CloudFormation templates for you. But if you're using Terraform and you, you don't really mind writing the Terraform code, I mean, that's fine. There's no point in really like switching over to using CDK to create the, um, the Terraform. So, but if you are using, you, if you're used to using Terraform, like with JSON, HCL, I would, I would say just not to bother with it. Um, unless you really hate writing Terraform, like very similarly, like very, some people like hate writing CloudFormation templates, so they'll use CDK to write those CloudFormation templates for them. So that's that's the one case I would like think about when you're when you're deciding to choose between CDK or Terraform or CloudFormation templates. So overall, I would say that using CDK and writing your code instead of the templates or the HCL, it can definitely be easier. So and it gives you a lot of options. So it, it could be a really good option to use. The new CDK, although it isn't still an alpha, so I wouldn't use it for production stuff quite yet, unless you really want to. But that is the end of this video. I hope you learned something or thought it was entertaining or something like that. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I'll like that button, hit the like button, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.